Welcome to Scroll in episode 131. I'm Ket. Joining me, of course, Davia Starjumper. How's it going, man? Going well. Going well. You know, wait, that's <laughs> how wait, <laughs> wait hold, on. hold on, wait, hold on. You know, what are I your feel feelings like... about being here right now? <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> I was trying, but I, you know, just saying going well, like I feel like that's a positive, you know, going well. But I've I've built up this, you know, I've built up this this You're trapped. You can yeah, never I, I can't go down. Else. I can't say going well. That's not enough. Uh thrilled to be here. Thrilled <laughs> okay. to be here. That's what I'll go Okay. With. All right. We'll take it. <laughs> now we're good. Acceptable. We're back on track. We're back on track. Almost derailed real early there. <laughs> I was getting nervous. Like, am I gonna have to find a new co host? Oh, like, gosh. is Starjumper okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thrilled to have you here, my friend, as always. Uh, we're here to talk about the Elder Scrolls Online. Public test server weeks two and three have have passed. We're in week three right now. And uh, pretty minimal stuff. You know, they've been kind of nailing it week one here lately, right? We haven't really been seeing... Yeah, there's not... You know, the, the days of, like, the massive changes, on, you know, in week three, they seem they seem long gone at this point. It's been a while. Like we're always like, okay, week three, this is it. Here we go. And then I feel like it's been a few patches in since we've had had anything juicy in week three. You know? Yeah, yeah. This is a whole lot of nothing. I feel like this week three, not in a bad way, but they're just like you said, they nailed it all in week one. Yeah, pretty much got where they wanted it to be, uh, except maybe. So I think this was a week two change with the Arctic Blast, the Warden ability. Um, so now this morph's heal will now occur if the if the ability failed to damage any enemies with the initial hit, rather than if the stun failed to hit any targets. They also reduced the healing by eleven percent and reduced the cost to thirty seven eighty instead of forty three twenty. It's actually like a way worse version of this ability. Yeah, now. that's uh, <laughs> everybody's sticking with Polar Wind. You know, it's it's for sure. Yeah. It's a neat idea, like. Especially as a as a as a like a, a you know a one bar player, I do like the idea of an ability that could potentially be a heal or damage like situationally. So I like the idea of it, but it just um, it does not look usable in its current state. I will say that. Yeah, you're not going to be able to rely on that heal. No. Right? Like if someone is in melee range and you need to heal, well, sorry, it's not going to heal you. Yeah, yeah, it's just, and right uh, now. Um, Right now, it is a usable ability. Like most people do use Polar Wind, but some people actually do use this ability right now. If it's a more offensively spec mm -hmm. uh, character that's like focused in uh, offensive stats rather than max health, uh, and this is a nice burst heal that's also a stun, has some damage as well. So it's a, it actually is usable currently on the live server. This version removes its usability completely. No, you're not going to use this ability like this. You're not going to be able. I mean, unless you're just. Not you. You don't want the heal, you know. Unless you just don't care about the <laughs> heal care. at all, and you're only interested in the damage and the stun, then maybe. But I feel like they should just take the heal away from it and balance it, you know, rebalance it for not having the heal in there. Is this? I'm trying to think through the the warden's like damaging toolkit outside of like the alt. Is this their only frost damage type ability? No, they got that uh, gripping shards that like ground. Yeah. Okay. Frost thing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I thought there was crystallized slab has that uh, that ice ball that shoots back at him. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. But this is really the only. Okay. That makes sense. I don't. The crystallized yeah, I, slabs one I forgot about, but. Yeah. The uh, the winter's revenge or whatever is is the main one, but. Yeah, I think they should just make this a damage version of Polar Wind, right? Just it's an instant burst mm -hmm. damage that applies a dot. Maybe it could have a stun or not. Doesn't really matter. But it would be. I would. I would like to see it as kind of like a AOE frost damage spammable. I think that would be. Yeah, just like a damage version of Polar Wind. Yep, it's basically. One hundred percent. Should be. It would be. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> that would be cool. Uncle Sam says, yes, that was the morph everyone thought was OP and we should nerf. <laughs> Finger on the pulse as always. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if we're, if we're going to adjust one of the morphs here, 
Arctic Blast is the one we're going to look at. That's the Polar one Wind. that's getting tinkered Okay. With. Interesting. So then um, I think that was the only real thing in week two. And then in week three, uh, the Sork class set, the new Sorcerer class set, Beacon of Oblivion, the non-pet version, when you don't have pets active, it's now 15% damage and healing, uh, but it's reduced to 5% when Battle Spirit is active. It's actually better for PvP. I mean, it was it didn't do anything in PvP previously, yeah. so now it's at least something. But uh, five percent that's that's minor berserk. That's equivalent to minor berserk, but you're also getting that amount of healing as well. It's not bad. It's like something. I, I doubt people are going to use this, you know, in PvP at least for a non-pet build. Yeah, five percent's uh, not enough for um, you know to dedicate a whole set to, but yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I think this is going to be a new PvP heavy, or P, not PvP, PvE heavy set. Like, Oh yeah, any non-pet sorks that want to do PvE, this is This easy. is going to be mean, the set, but uh, yeah. it, just had, it just doesn't seem to have a place in PvP, is what I would say. Grizzly says, perhaps the weakest new set may be. From a PvP standpoint, PvP. yeah, for sure. But maybe yeah. the strongest PvE set. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if they could make the Battle Spirit version more like 8%. Maybe 8% would be the sweet spot. Since it's damage and healing, it's hard to yeah, make it, it too that, much. That's the tough spot, is that if you raise that percentage too much with damage and healing, it gets a little crazy. But I do agree with you. Five's too low. Uh, Ten seems too high. So <laughs> somewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere in eight. that sweet spot. Uh, and then under scribing, I think this is something that actually happened in week one but it was missing from the notes but uh basically all grimoires have the option to have your major damage buff and your major crit buff on every single grimoire that can be your source of major damage or major crit buff which is awesome that's great yeah that's fantastic I, that's what scribing should be is that if you if you're looking for an ability to get your major buffs then you you can find it anywhere in these scribing abilities that's a that's a great change yeah, it's perfect for your stand for your standard buffs. I wonder if Major Resolve is already that way, like it's on every Grimoire. If not, that that should be the case. Yeah, that way, Resolve all three needs, of like yeah. your your kind of main buffs, like because surely one of those abilities are going to fit into your build somehow, and you're going to be able to use that. Absolutely, that's a great change. I was annoyed by like Wield Soul, like um the major crit buff is like the one major buff missing from the list. There, you can't you can't do that as it is right now. But this will fix that. Yeah, it's a great change. Another thing missing from the notes, I think, still missing from the notes. But if you log into the PC uh, into, into the PTS and look, uh, you'll see that uh, the the No CP Cyrodiil and Imperial City campaigns are proc enabled. They're they're yes proc now instead of no proc. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, proc. So your your battlegrounds builds are going to work in there. There's so that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, there's been a lot of positive talk about this. I think a lot of people are are pretty excited. Uh, I think it could actually bring some some traffic to uh, to these, especially considering oh, the the no CP Imperial City seems like maybe the most ghost town place in existence. <laughs> yeah, for that reason, it's actually a pretty good place to farm Telvar from uh, bosses. Yeah, because there's not a lot of people to challenge you if you get a group of people, but. Uh, yeah, the, the no proc condition has kept me out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll have my Battlegrounds builds, and shout out to Gummy Bear, he does a lot of no proc, and he'll hit me up and be like, yo, let's go to, you know, no CP Imperial City or whatever, and I'm like, well, I don't really have a build ready for that, and I don't really know how to make a build for that. It's not something I've really sat down to figure out, you know? So it's just like a, this giant speed bump. Yeah. But but now it's like, yep, my build right now that I have right here right now is ready to go. Let's do it. Yeah, that is nice. I mean, if you've got a PvP character with a PvP build, you don't want to have to completely drop that build to go do more PvP. Yeah, that's a good thing. I think I'll, yeah. I'll actually, you know, I really don't like um, like CP PvP all that much. You know, it's something we complain about quite a bit. Like, no one ever dies. You, you yeah. go to Cyrodiil or Imperial City where people have champion points, and man, fights just last forever and ever because resources are limitless and healing is so strong. So I really do prefer no CP PvP, but I want all my sets to work. You know, I want Wretched <laughs> you want to, Vitality to work. You want to keep you know? the build that, you, that you've that you got on your character. Yeah, exactly. So that's good. All right, so yeah, not a lot of PTS stuff. Probably not a lot of P 
Wikipedia stuff going to happen uh, going forward. I think maybe three more weeks until this patch goes live. I will say uh, the PvP crowd seems to be pretty uh, excited about this patch. It's weird that it's kind of is thought of as a housing patch. That's <laughs> turning out to be nothing much at all. Uh, but the PvP crowd is actually really hyped about this. I think mainly because of that uh, vampire undeath nerf that's coming yeah. up. I think everyone's pretty hyped about that. Could be a good change all around. Yeah. Uh, the scribing changes, the necromancer changes. Been a long time coming. So yeah, that's going to be great stuff. We got a little segment here that uh, Star Jumper, your idea. You suggested this, and uh, I thought it was a great idea. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a class assessment. Kind of a, you know, we're we're kind of at the halfway point between the last BG report and the next one, and. Uh, Really, things have changed quite a bit. It's a it's a pretty different landscape now than it was even you know six months ago. So we're not going to do a fully fledged BG report where we're ranking everyone and giving them a score and all that. Um, but we are just going to go down the list class by class and just talk about them, how they're doing in the current meta, and we might give them a theoretical score, maybe maybe not, you know. But uh, we'll just see where everyone's at. Let's do it. So let's start out with Sorcerer, and uh, my little tagline that I have for Sorcerer is top of the food chain. Yep, absolutely. It's Pretty great, much at the very great top. tagline. Yeah, yeah, they are the solo kings. If you go, if you queue up for a solo queue battlegrounds, you know, fifty percent of the players are sorcerers. Um, they're 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 easy to play. You know, they're a very cheesable class. They have. They have at least three buttons that are just like instant win buttons, you know. Uh, shields so, um, are up. The shields are up. You got shields, you got streak, you got your mage's wrath. You know, just slot those three abilities. You'll probably, yeah. you know, you probably yeah. do all right. When it comes to like group play and stuff, I think they compete with night blades. That's sort of the niche that they fill with like burst damage and crowd control is kind of what they bring to the table. And really the main thing is a hardened ward it is super duper carrying the class and it needs to get nerfed. Yeah, I kind think my, if you if there. I think if if there was a hardened ward nerf, I'd be okay with the class. I'd be okay with everything about. It. I mean, yeah. I still think they'd be at the top, but I'd be okay with with their with their setup. But when you th have their current setup and and what they're able to do, and then you throw that hardened ward on top of it, it is uh, it's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot, and it's it's infuriating to go up against. And I've said it on here a few times, but uh, the uh, the Vibrant Shroud, the Burst Heal that they were given in that same patch was really the only thing missing from their toolkit. Really the only thing sorcerers were asking for or saying, we need a reliable Burst Heal that doesn't require two bar slots or a resto staff. And they have that now, and it's a great ability. Uh, and But they were given this thing at the same time. It was just so completely unnecessary. So I think we can just take this back away from them you yeah. know, and leave them with the Vibrant Shroud, and we're good. Yeah, they'd be in a, they'd be in a great spot. So yeah, general assessment of Sorica is top of the food chain. They're doing just fine. Uh, next up, Dragon Knights. My little tagline for them is hold, holding it down. I would say Dragon Knights are holding it down, <laughs> um, fossilizing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know they they are not bad. It's just in the solo queue they do struggle, and we've mm -hmm. been saying that for a long time. And especially in the the kind of meta that's that's happening right now. Um, a good dragon knight, like someone who's a really good player who's like a dragon knight, dragon knight main and can play the class really well, then yeah, they'll go into the solo queue and just and just rip it up, you know. And they're like a, they're like an absolute monster. But if you're a player kind of like we are, where we're, well, you're a dragon knight main, so you're, you're an example. But you know, like like a lot of us, where we're rotating around a lot of different characters, and you know, I can hop onto a sork, get you know a gajillion kills, hop onto a, a templar, get a bunch of kills, really. Just about every class has some kind of cheese that makes it easy to to do what they do. But a Dragonite, you just kind of have to be good at the game. And that's that's the cheese, you know, is just being good at the game. <laughs> uh, so I think that's why they, they kind of struggle solo. And then when it comes to groups, it's like they're super powered because they have that extra, what, like 14% yeah. healing taken, basically permanently active at all times. So like their, the, their benefit that they kind of extract from a group is is way more than other classes get. So they, that's what, that's like a major reason why they, they really shine in groups. Plus they just have so much damage and, yep. and a really great toolkit. I do think they need to be buffed a little bit. They kind of are on the, the short end of the balance stick. 
And um, I think this is something I've talked about a lot, but I want to mention it again. Like people complain about Dragon Knights when they're when they're actually well balanced, you know, because a lot yeah. of people's perception of balance is uh, based on one v one fights. And so you'll get in this in this situation where DKs are winning all the dueling tournaments, and so everyone's like DKs over overpowered; they need to be nerfed. But like, dude, this is a class that was designed to face roll trial bosses. You know, like <laughs> nobody should be able to beat this guy one v one. You know, yeah. period. Like that's just that's what the class does. That's their thing. And yeah, and uh, you take that away from them, you know, like compare them to a Templar, like as it is right now. Uh, a DK has a bit more offensive pressure than a Templar does. Not like an astronomical amount more, but enough more to make it worth bringing a DK instead of a Templar in most cases in a, in a, like a pre-made group. Yeah. But like, you know, if you bring the Templar benefit is you have a lot of extra healing power, you have that cleanse, you know, so the DK has to do more damage than the Templar or we're going to bring the Templar because that yeah. extra healing power and that cleanse is going to be nice, you know? So that's, I feel like that's just something that they always struggle with that they're they're always being held back by like their the public perception that they're too strong because of dueling tournaments basically. Um but yeah, they should be the best duelers, period. Yeah, they that's they true. should be I I I look at it this way is, is the Dragon Knight like you just said, they they they're not going to offer any team heals and and they're one of the few classes that that really can't do that right now. There's a lot of um hybrid type classes out there templar being the best but they they're they're not going to be unless you you know you know scribe a certain healing ability or something but just talking about the class you're not going to be bringing a lot of heals to the team their their kind of goal is that high damage you know get in your face and 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 brawl like to me that they, they, and that's i think why i i main the classes that they are of all the classes they're the brawler class in my mind they like get up you know, prolong the fight, you know, outlast people. But the, the, like you said, the struggle right now is that they, in the current meta, the, they, they get picked on a little bit with the, with the range, you know, and the dotting up at range. They don't really have an easy way to, to cleanse themselves. Uh, they struggle a little bit when they get just kind of poked and picked on at range. Um, and so that's, that's the, the thing that I think they're, they're hurting is that, they can't get to the fight as easy as they could in the past. Like by the time, uh, by the time you actually get to the fight, you're, you're all dotted up. You're already, you know, you're already struggling. You're already on the defensive by the time you get there. Yeah. As our, our friend six says, you're, you're storming the beaches of Normandy, just trying to approach <laughs> yes. the fight, just trying to get there. And so I, I agree with you. I think they need a little something to me. The, you know, we, right now we think of an arcanist. I'm, skipping ahead by naming a different class here but we look at everybody thinks of an arcus right now in a bg and they're just tanky as all get out they're uh they're i think they're in a good spot but when you see an arcanist you know they're going to be defensive tanky hard to take down and i just that's where i think dragon knight needs to be they need to have some level of it you need to really focus to bring them down so that they can actually get to the fight um and actually start doing their stuff Okay, so that's Dragon Knight. So yeah, Dragon Knight. I, I think they're doing well. They're they're in their place. I do think they need to be buffed a little bit, like mm-hmm. offensively, or or like maybe a sustained buff so that they can invest in into offense a little bit more. That's the part I think that would be key for them is just a just a, a slight sustained buff just across the class, and that's going to help with their. It's going to make them a little bit tankier, and it's going to make their damage go up a little bit more. I think that could fix a lot of their current struggles. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or give us a, a class cleanse. I would I'd be all for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we gotta we gotta retain Templar's value somehow. That's yeah. true. That's true. Well, let's move on to Nightblade. So um my tagline for Nightblade, this may be a hot take, but uh, in my opinion, Sorks are just now catching up to Nightblades. And uh the the thing that we've been complaining about with Sorks is has really been the situation Nightblades have been in for a very long time. Uh, I don't think people have been complaining about it because most Nightblades don't build that way because they don't have to because they can turn invisible, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, the the problem with Sorks is, you know, you shouldn't have that kind of, like, threatening offensive toolkit along with this kind of amazing defensive kit. Yeah. And, I mean, that's the that's the situ- situation Nightblade has been in for a long time, actually, you know. And when you, when you really build for it, you can be, you know, hey, quiet. Sorry, dogs. 
uh, <laughs> you know, you can have a ton, you can have a ton of damage and be basically impossible to kill on a night blade. So I think Sorks are honestly just now catching up to night blades. I think they're in a very similar spot. You can build them both in such a way where they're infuriating to fight against. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, night blades are in a great spot. They're a really, really good spot. A lot of night blades out there. A whole lot of night blades. I, I think that's yeah. the part I struggle with night blade is that along with Sork, like I think Sork and Night Blades have the best just kind of combo to bring someone down. Uh it's different, but you know, Night Blades is just all the burst and Sorks are just blowing people up if you even get remotely. Yeah, they're they're like direct rivals with each other. Yes. Right? Like Night Blades and Sorks are rivals. Um, and just you know, just like the Sork with the the hardened ward is like, why does that fit on there? You know, not, I feel like Nightblade is tough in that regard because one, they have you know they've got the the stealth. You know, they've got invisibility, which is it's hard to it's hard to weigh that against any sort of balance. I feel like because it's just such a different ability. Yeah. But I, I don't necessarily have any issues with that. I think the 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 tricky part is is that arguably Nightblade right now also has the best class heal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so when you have invisibility and the top class heal with you know in the top two with kind of damage combo, I think that's where you're seeing that's where the popularity is is bringing them to the top. Is it? It's a very very good time for night blades right now. Yeah, I mean their burst heal is really good, but also they have stuff like phantasmal escape, the very loaded, yeah. amazing defensive tool. They have a, a really awesome sustain tool now with um, siphoning attacks, which was already a great sustain tool. But you know, since they buffed it, now it's basically a better version of Dark Deal Sorcerer ability, where you just have on-demand resources as much as you want, and there's just no end to you know, like every every situation they have an answer. You yeah. can have you can build a toolkit that has everything in it with with no drawbacks. That's a great point. They, they, it, you know, we've joked about this in the past, but they have so many abilities that have so much packed into that ability uh, that it, it, you know any class ability you throw in the bar is going to have multi use. Uh, and yeah, I think cloak, that's what cloak makes gives them. you your crit buff on both bars. Yeah, all slotted. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. They're in a good, they're in a good spot right now. A lot of night blades in the uh, in the BGs for sure. Spamble gives you minor expedition. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just such a convenient situation for them so yeah they're in an excellent spot probably second best solo class i would say <laughs> that um, the, the, the the two most terrifying moment in a bg is when you know uh, a sork has just thrown their sork combo on you and you see your health bar go to 49 percent or lower that's the most terrifying or when you see a night blade appear out of nowhere with their full merciless end cap combo those two yeah two most terrifying moments in a bg right now <laughs> and th they often happen simultaneously yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> it'll be teammates that do it at the exact same time <laughs> that's a great point i'll also say about night blades that i uh, in groups they're excellent they're yeah. they're one of the very best classes you can bring uh our best version of our kind of pre-made comp that we have includes a night blade always uh largely because of their cc capabilities and their burst um but you know, my perception of the, of their value in groups has changed quite a bit in the last several months since we've been doing so many pre-mades. I've always thought of them as being not really a group-oriented class, but actually they have a lot of stuff that's super-duper valuable to a group. So yeah, in groups, they're they're very good. They're just generally in a great spot. I mean, play yeah. Nine Blade for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm curious, you know, like with Sork, I feel like to bring them down a little bit, it's easy, the Hardened Ward. What do you think that is for Nightblade? I, I can't think of like a singular thing that I would say they need to be brought down on. Um, they're just they're just good yeah. All it's around. more it's They've more got spread great out. abilities spread out everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's more spread out for them. There's not like one thing that's like this is the win button. It's just like everything is so loaded. Just look just look across their skill bar. And like, you know, you've joked lots of times, David, there's just like three paragraphs of stuff, <laughs> yes. you know, for every skill they have slotted. Does all this like, do? They just need to delete some of those so that you have yeah. actually have to make some decisions as far as bar space goes. It's a great point. Next up, we have Templar. My tagline for Templar is balanced. That's something you said about them recently, Davius, and that's stuck in my head. Uh, I think they really are probably like the most balanced class all yeah. around. They are they are the the centerpiece. Uh, I feel like that for balancing right now. <laughs> yeah, they really are just kind of right in the middle of everything. They're pretty darn good healer. They're pretty good uh, at offense. You know, you can play them at range. You can play them melee. 
pretty easy class to play, you know, not complicated really at all. Yeah. Sam's got the the beam gif. The beam gif for sure. That's the thing for me with the Templar is that it uh, of all the classes out there you can get extremely focused or kind of do a little bit of everything with the Templar. You they they have a fantastic heal setup if you want to go heals. They've got unique abilities, you know, unique um healing capabilities that that make them very specific and great to have if you want to go you know range kill secure you know the beam is a a very very one of the best abilities in the game for that um and so they have that capability um and then jabs is maybe one of the most you know like a that's a, a nostalgic one of the most classic aoe kind of brawler pressure abilities and so they really can kind of just go across the board uh, they've got a. I feel like lately there hasn't been like any major buffs to Templar, but there's been these little slight adjustments to like make them a little bit more um, defensive toolkit. You know, with the with the bubble or or the the rune on the ground. Like there's these little adjustments that they keep adding. Um, that I I don't feel like Templars are are completely OP, but I definitely think that they're they're good. Like you know, you see a lot of really good Templars out there in a. You just kind of pick your direction you want to go and, and kind of take off. Yeah, they've definitely been geared more kind of on the defensive side of things. You know, since some of their offensive power has been taken away and it's kind of been given to their defensive capabilities with that rune buff mm-hmm. uh, and things like that. I think they're a extremely good pla- good class for like someone who's new to the game, like your first class to like learn the the game on, learn the ropes of PVP on Templar might be one of the best classes period. Cause again, they don't really have, they're kind of like DK. They don't really have a lot of cheese, but they kind of do because of how much healing power they have and how they can just cleanse anything off of them. That is kind of a crutch you can lean on, but it's not, I don't feel like it's not too much of a crutch. Like you're still having to <laughs> learn how to play. Um, so yeah. Um, very balanced class in the solo queue excellent excellent class if they're played right which i think uh you want to play them kind of as a generalist sort of uh where you're you're a healer or a damage dealer kind of whatever is needed moment to moment that's how i play my templar Mm -hmm. and they're a good option in groups they're um they they generally don't make it into the group We, we usually will prefer a dk they can be they compete with a dragon knight for a spot in the group basically and we generally go for a dk because we just need we need the damage mm-hmm but they are a good option. Like if um, if you're in a group that if you need a brawler, like a DK type of role, but the group is a little lacking on healing, so okay, maybe a Templar instead of a DK would be the good choice then. So we can have a little extra healing. Yeah. Um, so I w- I would say as a DK main, uh, my favorite teammate to have in a BG is a Templar. <laughs> I'm yeah. all about it. Give me a Templar. I mean, obviously, really, I could just simplify that as is just put a healer on my team, and I'm just thrilled. But uh templar specifically that that cleanse ability um plus i don't have to you know when i've got a templar healer on the team i can i can roam off a little bit i can chase a little bit and and still not worry too much and and at least come back and get back to where the templar they can take care of me yeah in the same way i'm always sprinting to those cleansing circles so that's all kind of like the base game classes uh so next up we have warden and uh, my my tagline for Warden is <laughs> Warden. Warden. They, They're, they still are, warden. They're still, They're still a Warden. They're still still a Warden. Who they are, which is great. It's a great spot. Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely mandatory for any group that you're putting together. Got to have a Warden. In solo, they're they're very fun when you play when you play them solo. They're just an absolute juggernaut. You can just kind of barrel straight into a a giant dog pile and just kind of say hello and not really worry too much. Uh, they're really great at just shutting down Sorks. That's why I've been having a lot of fun uh, on a warden lately in the solo queue with all the Sorks around with a crystallized slab, just, you know, making their lives miserable. Uh, I think probably in general, they're probably in a good spot, you know, like their offense is absolutely not threatening at all. Like I never am afraid of dying to a warden uh, and they're at the same time, very difficult to kill. They make their team way, way stronger, which for a class that lacks offense, that makes sense that they, they should be yeah. good at those things. Yeah, they're kind of the, the a buff to the team for sure. You know, I was thinking about this when we, and I agree with this tagline perfectly. It perfectly describes it. But I was thinking about this, like, Warden has been in such a great spot for a long, long time. And even 
even gosh it seems like forever ago and now nobody was playing warden but even in that time of where you didn't see a lot of them they were still in a good spot we used to always make they were the joke, great then. like warden yeah. was really good just nobody was interested in them but yes I, we were saying know. that the whole time like <laughs> warden's been great this whole time guys like warden, i don't know what y- y'all are doing yeah warden's still good yeah. it, 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 it's yeah. always been good you know but i was thinking about I, I i was trying to really kind of circle what their secret sauce is and i think it's exactly what you said like the amount of buffs and just Ele- like they just elevate whatever team they're on um and and really just like class abilities like the uniqueness of their class ab- you know we we're talking about uh night blades got you know three paragraphs and chapters on their abilities for me warden's just got so many good class abilities like you can you can stay within just within warden class abilities on your build and be just fine and i, I that's that's uh part of their secret sauce for me is that they've just got so many good choices just within their own class. And so you only have to go. In fact, I would say most warden builds you see are like 90% class abilities there. They've just, they've got so many good abilities just across the board. And then, and like you said, they've got so many, you know, they just, they just elevate whatever team that they're on. Warden probably in a great spot. I don't know if I would even adjust them at all. They're they're pretty good. All right, next up we have Necromancer. My tagline for them is functional. They're getting there. They're getting there, <laughs> you know. You can, you, can, you can make a Necro build that functions, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So we should probably need to nerf them a little bit. <laughs> Necromancer. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we're going to say they're functional, so they're, they're going to have some nerfs coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be fair. They're going to be in a little bit better spot coming up. But honestly, these... Um, quote unquote buffs that they're getting here pretty soon doesn't change a whole lot for the class. Like it changes like convenient bar setups and that, that will be nice. I'll be happy about that, but we still have problems with like inconsistent class design, for example, where we have dot bonuses, but no real useful dots and like a class design that's like in conflict with itself. Like we have these pets, but we also have this dot thing. So we can invest if if we want to make our pets do a lot of damage. Well, those do direct damage, not dot damage. So I'm taking away from my dot power then in that case, you know, or if I want to go into dots, then I'm taking away from my pets. You know, the, are, the class is designed in such a way where you can't really invest in any one direction without taking away from some other important thing. So you can, yeah. it's just so difficult to, to reach a level of power. I saw um, someone posted, someone shared their, um, what was it? It was an Arcanist. I think it was an Arcanist build, and they shared the the gear that they were using. And I was looking at it, and I was like, "Wow, that's literally an identical setup to my Necro build, Despair." But that build doesn't get anything close to those results, <laughs> you know, like not even close. Uh, and it's because of that. It's because I can't really invest in any one thing or really focus on anything on the build, in, unless I, I sacrifice the functionality of the build. Yeah. So that, that's that, they're, they're still they're still struggling with that kind of stuff where like these these so-called buffs that they're getting I'm I'm thankful for them but it doesn't it doesn't actually fix the class there's still a lot of work to do in that regard also the tethers we just need to get rid of the tethers guys they're not fun to use they're not yeah. easy to use they're not good we need to get rid of those and um you know even with these buffs that they're that they're getting like added to the mender and added to the the armor buff and all that sort of stuff still a major major lack of buffs in general you know where you look at a templar you know their spammable gives them their major damage buff their class dot gives them their major crit buff their their armor buff is also a sustain buff and a heal over time you know like you slot three abilities as a templar you're already functional you know like it's it's not so much that they have yeah like yeah these these buffs are within the class it's that they are attached to abilities that you already want to use so it's so easy to have a, a convenient bar setup even with the stuff that necro is getting next patch they're still not as in a situation like that or like with nightblade yeah. you know uh where just everything just so like accidentally you just kind of have everything don't you like you didn't even really mean to <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i think they need a like just overhaul the whole class, just like start from scratch, just reinvent the class, give them a whole new kind of niche to fill and, and everything. Cause they're, they're already to begin with kind of a reskin of a warden, you know, the mm-hmm. way they absolutely their combo functions and everything like right out of the gate are like, okay, if you've played a warden before, you're going to be on familiar ground here. I think 
yeah, we need to reinvent the class, get, get away from that. Like, Hey, let's just get rid of blast bones. Honestly, like the, the grave Lord sacrifice kind of rethinking that I think is a great idea. Like let's, let's, let's rethink this class here. Honestly, like just from the ground up, I think is where we need to go. Yeah. Delete the tethers. Yeah. And, and they've got, you know, they've got already existing things. I feel like that could work, you know, like, you know, look at the Sork or look at the warden. Like you've, you've, you know, there's, there's abilities in the game to have a minion, if you will, that can stay out there. And, and Necromancer to me is like one of the most minion based classes out there. And Warden's the one that has an ultimate that has a permanent minion that stays out there. Or Sork is the one that has permanent, you know, regular abilities that keep a, a you know, a summoned minion out there. Um, and it just seems like that, that Necromancer, you could absolutely tap into that. It just, um, yeah, they just they don't they don't they don't really have an identity right now. Yeah, and it doesn't really help with like I was saying, like inconsistent class design, like okay, like I have buff coverage now, but what sets should I use to maximize yeah. the potential of my class here? It's still a difficult answer to a uh, difficult question to answer. Yeah. I think we've made the point. Let's move on. <laughs> uh talk about Arcanist. Uh tagline for Ar- Arcanist is uh they are top tier. They are a top tier class. Absolutely. Just, I mean, S S tier, right up there with Warden side by side. I would say we were talking about how Warden is mandatory on every team. Arcanist too. I would yeah. say you need both. You pretty much need both if you want to have a competitive team. That's kind of I feel like where you start is you throw a Warden. You're making a four team, a four team comp. Arcanist, Warden, and then just kind of plug and play on those other two. You'll probably be okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really the first kind of decision is okay for our main support do we want that to be an arcanist or a warden and then okay then we then also just whichever one that is okay make sure we have the other one and and so we normally do an arcanist as the main healer and then like a 50 50 warden in the in the group and that works extremely well but uh you could also do like a a warden main healer uh, and then an arcanist um just focused on damage but as long as you have them both in the group somehow um you're going to be doing okay Solo, they're great. They're excellent. I mean, they're an absolute mm-hmm. juggernaut. They're they're like wardens in that they are that juggernaut. They can just ram themselves right into a group, but they also have the killing power that wardens don't have. Uh, but then they they lack support is the thing. They don't really elevate their team the way a warden does. So it's a, it's a different kind of class. That that beam certainly makes them feel very very unique. And it, I was reluctant to use the beam. I was resistant to it at first, but now that it's won me over, I. I like it. I I really, it's super unique. It's super duper effective. Once you learn how to use it well, it's not something that you're going to kill every single person with, but for the situations where it does work, it works extremely well. And you know, not every class has to be good at everything, you know, so they are good at what they do. That that's the thing for me is that I, you know, when you made, you know, go and they've had changes since then, but when you went back and you first made your Arcanist, I still don't have one. I'll make one one day. I promise. Uh, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that later on, but, what really stood out to me is that you you played it, you had fun, you leveled up the class, and you're like, yeah, it's really good, I really like it, but it just seemed like there wasn't anything that like excited you about the class. Like you were like, yeah, it's good, like yeah. I play it, but there was just nothing. And then it's like once you started using that beam, like you saw clearly, like like every, all the fog uh, went away, and you were like, yes, this class is fantastic. Um, yes. And it, it seemed like you it must, was you must the embrace un- the beam. Yes, absolutely. Just take in the beam. It seemed like it unlocked everything. Uh, and your really Arcanist, does. your Arcanist is nasty. I've been on the other end of that Arcanist here recently. It's nasty. <laughs> it is nasty. And for a one bar enthusiast such as yourself, they're an amazing one bar class. I mean, mm. so easy to, to I know. have that's a really, why, that's what, really effective one bar build. All the reason I need to, to put one together. Yeah. I already have the build for you, buddy. <laughs> You've already got it set up. Just, yeah. just level the character up. Yeah, so uh, I don't even know if Arcanist, if I would adjust them at all. I think they're in a pretty good spot, honestly. I think I like them just how they are. Even though they're crazy tanky, again, they have that offense, but the offense is counterable. It's avoidable. I never really feel like I'm in too terrible of trouble against an Arcanist unless it's like group fights, you know, and kind of makes yeah. sense that that's where they're good. So yeah, I'd keep them just like they are. Honestly. Yeah, I would just say overall, all classes. Like I would say everything, you know, PvP feels very good right now. I think we're all excited about the the undeath passive change. That's just going to yes. lead to a oh, little yeah. bit more killing and fighting, which is always good in PvP. 
But you know, you know, I think at the very top, Sork and Nightblade. Um, Sork, you know, we've talked about it. We, and, you know, we've said so many things about the Hardened Ward. I think that change needs to happen. I don't know what. I don't know. Nightblade probably needs to be taken down. I have no idea how you would do it, but maybe taken down a little bit. Warden and Arcanist, I feel like are are in a very good spot. Just fantastic classes, good spot. Um, Templar, great spot. Like overall, like I think I think the classes are good. Dragonite maybe needs a little bit, and Necromancer just Necromancer just needs a direction. <laughs> That's what they yeah. need. Yeah, um, yeah. The Sorks need their hardened ward nerf. Nightblades, uh, I think this survivability needs to be nerfed somehow. That is, how, yeah. It doesn't really matter how. Any, no, any number of ways they could do it. It's a very good way to say it. If, if they were just a little bit squishier, it would, and it would make more sense for the class too, you know, like the stealthy, sneaky. Yeah. I agree with that. That's a good point. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and talk about some more stuff. Okay, so let's talk about what's been going on in the game here lately. Chaos Ball weekend was, uh, I think, weekend before last. I actually had a pretty good time with it. How, how was it for you, man? It was non-existent for me. So I was at oh, a, okay. I, <laughs> I was at a a, uh, a work conference the entire weekend. I I left. Oh, that's right. That's right. Friday, and then I got, and it ran all the way to the following Tuesday. So. This guy and his work conferences, you know, let me tell you. Work keeps getting in the way of my ESL. <laughs> uh, I keep telling the boss, you know, like, hey, what's up? I'm like, priorities here. Yeah. The Chaos Ball weekend was actually pretty fun, though. I enjoyed that's what it. I heard. Uh, it was, I mean, we, you know, you get those games where there's just a bunch of tanks and that's kind of annoying, but it really wasn't every single game. And, you know, the thing about Chaos Ball weekend is everybody goes to that ball, everybody piles mm-hmm. up, there's fights are going to be happening. And it's actually a, an amazing uh, like weekend event to play my Arcanist with the, the Azure Blight oh, and the Tarnish. Beam them to bits. Yeah, I was doing a... It's been Azure Blight and Tarnish, but for uh, for Chaos Ball, I was doing a Azure Blight and Vicious Death. And uh, that's pretty fun. And you use the, the Rune of Displacement to pull everybody in, and you blast them all with that beam, and you got the Tarnish or the, the Azure Blight and the Vicious Death popping off, and you get some nice wipes that way. Works really well. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. That's the thing for me about Chaos Balls is exactly what you just said there. Is it, it's, it's not terrible. Like, if a tank grabs the ball and the game ends in two minutes or however long, you know, like, that's not great. But it does at least promote some pretty good fights. Like, there's going to be fights. Even in a short match, like, there's still going to be some fights. Yeah, and it's a great time for bomb builds. Because, like, if you go in there with, say, like, a Nightblade or even a Sork, as strong as they are, it can be hard to get kills because everyone builds tanky for chaos ball. A lot of people bring healers and there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So like a single target kind of setup can be tough to get through that stuff, but you bring like a bomber, like this, like this Azure blight Arcanist kind of setup, up and that'll get the job done a lot of the time. Whereas those, those builds are hard to play with in battlegrounds. A lot of the rest of the time when there's like relic and crazy King and all that stuff going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Already seeing some more necros out there. People getting hyped about the necro news. I'm, I'm seeing like a, a pretty big uptick in the number of ne- necromancers that you're seeing in BGs already. It's That's nice. a good thing. Let's see more yeah. of them. We need more. Yeah. <laughs> Bring more focus to them. I actually have a pretty good necro build I've been playing with. It's Bobby Bobango, my stam crow. Talk about him a little bit here. Uh, so his build is Venomous Smite on the front bar with the Flame Staff, Wretched on the back bar with the Bow, Two Pieces Mighty Chudan, Ring of the Wild Hunt. There's a throwback. And one Piece Trainee. Yeah, Wild Hunt is nice. I was doing Swift. Uh, for the Necro, you know, their their defensive kit is a little bit lacking. So um, I was doing Swift to kind of mitigate that a little bit. But Wild Hunt is nice because that lets me use Bloodthirsty Jewelry. Just get a lot of extra damage that way. It's all well fitted with, with the Bloodthirsty Jewelry. I like the the um, the the Mighty Chudan monster set. And then I just replaced my armor buff with Shuffle instead. So I get the Major Evasion with the Snare Removal. I uh, get the, the Major Expedition with the bow, so it's just a really nice little combo there. Um, super duper slippery with the shuffle, the wild hunt, the bow. He's a wood elf, well-fitted, five medium. You know, he's very speedy little guy. <laughs> tiny little guy. Uh, tiny, speedy. Yeah, he's very mental. tiny. Yeah, he's a, he's a wood elf with all the sliders as small as they can possibly go. 
Uh, and I'm looking forward to the next patch. His bar is going to be pretty cool. He's going to have that skeletal archer on the back bar. That'll be his um, his major damage buff. I'll have a wield soul with the stun and major prophecy attached to it. So that'll be my major crit buff. I'll have Ellie Sus, the Venom Skull, and of, cl- and of course Blast Bones. Um, so it'll be a very, you know, class centric sort of bar setup. I'm looking forward to that. Very as, basic. As, as necros, you can make it right there. Yeah. Yeah. He'll have all the minions, all three minions. and Pretty basic build, but it, it already functions really well as it is right now. So it'll just be a little bit better next patch. Looking forward to that. And then uh, just really quick, I want to talk about a, a setup on Old Betsy that I've been doing the last couple of days. It's uh, not necessarily like her new official build or anything. She has like, I don't know, three or four builds <laughs> that I just kind of rotate around. Um, but this is a pretty good setup that I've been enjoying. It's Order's Wrath, Double Bar, Wretched Vitality, Back Bar with a Bow, a Vatishran Lightning Staff on the front bar, Gaze of Sithis Mythic Helm, One Piece Magma, so if you remember, Betsy usually has a Black Rose dual wield on the front bar, but yeah. I'm trying a Vatishran Lightning on the front bar, which is um, it's pretty cool. The main reason is because uh, I want to be able to do heavy attacks with a, with a staff to get Magicka back, mm. and then I have the bow on the back bar to do, you know, to do heavies to get, a, to get stamina. Because um, a major aspect of what Betsy does is she provides support when needed, right? So yeah, sometimes absolutely. she's going to be a lot of spamming support heals. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a lot. But sometimes it sucks when I'm spamming heals on somebody over and over and over and I'm completely drained of Magicka and I just have to wait for it to come back. Nothing else I can really do. So it's nice to have a staff that I can do heavy attacks with like that. Uh, the, the damage does go down a little bit. with Even with the Vatishran staff compared to the Black Rose dual wield, uh, it's a little less damage. Uh, but still the damage is pretty good. And... Uh, and I still get major evasion because um, since I'm not using the dual wield, I get rid of blade cloak and I just, I just replace that with shuffle. So I get the major evasion and the snare removal, which I don't, I don't have snare, I didn't have snare removal before. Oh, very nice. So there's some pros and cons. I basically gain some defensive benefits uh, with the build uh, is the main thing, and I lose a little bit of damage, but really not all that much. So we'll see if it sticks. I don't know. It's kind of feels weird having a, a staff on the front bar with Betsy. It just doesn't quite feel. <laughs> I'm right. trying to imagine this. I I don't know if I can even imagine what it would look like. It doesn't look right. It does not look right. <laughs> what what staff style do you have? What's it called? I think it's called Passion Dancer. It's one of those crown store has like okay. the okay. shiny particle effects and stuff right. on it. So you got a fancy one on there. That's good. That's good. yeah, yeah. It's actually the same style as the dual wield that she was using. Okay. Okay, yeah. very good, very yeah. good. But it's a good setup, yeah. I mean, Order's Double Bar, Wretched Back Bar with a Bow, Vatishran Lightning on the front bar, Sithis Elm, One Piece Magma, works great. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking next patch I might go back to Vampire, since uh, that, that Undeath Ooh. Passive will be Stage 1, so I can just stay on Stage 1, because uh, I like having Mist Form, and it's another uh, basically another dot that I have in the build with the Blood Mist. Uh, plus extra, extra mobility, of course. So I Betsy's might go gonna back be, to vamp next She's going to be turning back to her wild side. Maybe. I, mean, I think I'll at least try it, see how it feels, and I may cure sure. it. We'll see. So. Yeah, I get that. That's what's been going on with me. Davius, what you been up to, man? Like I said, I haven't been able to play a whole lot lately. I had the work conference uh, that first weekend, and then this past weekend, I was actually celebrating my wife, the law dog, as we know her on the Uh the podcast, uh, is getting a new job. She's getting a new gig. Uh, She's going to be 100% remote, which is pretty sweet setup. I'm so jealous. (laughs) Yes. Fully remote uh, job. Are they hiring? Can I? Can <laughs> yeah, can you go? Uh, it's, a, it's a sweet setup. Um, really helps us out with the kids and everything. She'll be home uh, 100% of the time for school events and things like that. So uh, this That's past amazing. weekend, I just spent the whole weekend celebrating her with the new gig. So we went out to lunch, went to all the movies, went to the dinners, uh, had a good That's time. Awesome. Now it has cut into my ESO time a little bit. So yeah, usually, so what all you know? So what that means is that instead of working on a new build or updating a build, I've just been playing Lord of Nords. He's he's been my safe spot, just logging on with Lord of Nords. You just got to prioritize with the time you get. (laughs) If I'm only getting this amount of time, that means Lord of Nords is getting a whole lot of play time. Uh, So you guys get to hear me talk about Lord of Nords once again. Just just a reminder: the build is uh, Oaken Soul uh, Ring, Burning Spell Weave. Uh, blood spawn monster set one trainee and one druids uh, it's all well fitted with infused jewelry 
the bar setup, uh, Flames of Oblivion, Molten Whip, Quick Cloak, uh, Resolving Vigor, Coagulating Blood, and then the Leap. Um, and really just, you know, I, I know I keep saying it, and, and this is just, this build is in such a sweet spot here lately. Um, and the build is in the, um, it's in the Goon forum on the Discord. Um, yep. But it's just, the, the Flames of Oblivion, just constant pressure on a one bar build. Like it, it just kind of takes care of the pressure that I wanted this will this build to be. Um, and then, you know, you're with the whip and the leap, like you've got constant damage pressure out there. And then if you, whoever you're focusing on, you just, that's when you throw the, the whip and the leap into them and you can kind of, that's, that's where you're going to focus your damage. Uh, great survivability, great damage. Um, you know, the quick cloak just up at all times, you know, the, the, the black rose prison weapons, uh, the major evasion, the AOE damage, plus you're getting your expedition. It's just fantastic. And and really, kind of just the the sweet sauce to this build is just I, I, in my head I label it as a rinse and repeat because you're really just you're you're going through the combo regardless of the situation. Like even if you're going against somebody that you can't take down or or if you're outnumbered, like running away in this build. And I still do this sometimes, but running away in this build is like a terrible thing to do. Like obviously get out of a bad situation as you can, but if if you're in kind of a tight spot, as soon as you start running away from them. Unless you've got a really good route to get out of the to get out of that situation, you're kind of hurting yourself. Like the best thing to do with this build is just the rinse and repeat because it's it's going to keep all your resources up. You can keep your healing up, and you're just kind of going through that rinse and repeat, just waiting for the best opportunity. Uh, and usually a teammate will come up, or like you know maybe a teammate's you know went down, and you're waiting for them to get back up. And if you can just hold out until the teammate gets back up there. Then you're going to get that opportunity to take advantage of. So uh, overall, just loving the build. Still, really feel like it's it's reached that that peak performance level. Uh, it's it's been doing really really well. Yeah, classic DK. Just fight your way out. Don't run. Yeah, don't do it. As soon as you show them you're back, you're like you're just you just become a target at that point. It's it's not not a good not a good way to go for the DK. Yeah. What's up, Maddie Quinn? Thanks for joining us, Ricky Bays. I don't think I said hello earlier, or did I? Can't remember. But hello again. <laughs> and then the well. other the other thing I was going to talk about here is potential. You know, I've talked about this. I got some potential Arcanist character names for you to run down. Oh, boy. Here. All right. Okay. I got I got the list. Uh, potential Arcanist names. So so this is just kind of the names that I, I like the most. I actually have a, a list of Nord names that's like. I don't know, somewhere in the 20s or 30s of, of, of names. But um, these, I, I'm going to run through the list. you got to give me your vote, you know, if, if, if listeners want to email in with their, their favorite. But just starting just at the top. podcast at gmail.com. There we go. Uh, and this is in no particular order. This is just the, how, how they came out of my brain. Uh, so we've got at the top the Nautical Nord. The not okay. The Nautical <laughs> Nord. That's, you know, Arcanist. You know, it's kind of got the you tentacles. you got to get that, like, you got to get that like sailor outfit oh, yeah, style, 100%. whatever it's it would, called. It would absolutely be styled that way. Uh, the next one is the Norse Force. The no- okay. Norse Force. Uh, the next one is the Nord of Null. I feel like Nord that's kind of, of no. A- there's a there's a player named Null that I don't like. We can't oh, <laughs> it's like it's like baby. It's like baby name. No, no, no. I know an Ashley. I don't like her. That one's off. Yeah, Nord of Null. Nixed. We don't like Null. Uh, the nomadic no, just, hey, Nord. If, if if Null listens to this podcast, I'm sorry. I think you're cool. My bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the nomadic Wait. Nord is the next one. Nomadic Nord. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that doesn't really. I don't. I feel like that doesn't really fit Arcanist particularly. Yeah. It would. It, it would have to be very stylized. That one would have to be okay. very stylized into the style. But I agree with I you. Gotcha. It would be hard. It'd be hard to fit that one in. Uh, now I think this one is going to be one of your favorites, Nord Nirvana. No, okay, that's pretty good, Nord Nirvana. <laughs> Nord like Nirvana. Uh, the next one is the Nameless Nord. The Nameless Nord. I do like that. Yep. Uh, like that. Mm-hmm. The Nocturnal Nord. We got a okay. lot of titles on these ones coming up. Yeah, the a ne- lot of a lot of yeah. uh, alliteration. Yeah, yeah. The okay. Neglected Nord. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, the Notorious Nord. Okay. And then the last one on the list, Night Night Nord. 
I don't like that one. <laughs> Uncle much. Sam the Naughty Nord. The Naughty Nord. Okay. <laughs> why didn't you think of that one? Yeah, why didn't I think of that one? So that's 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 the list I'm going through right now. I kind of like the nautical nor just because I kind of have a, a like a look you idea. The tentacle. You got the tentacle. Yeah. I kind of have a look idea. Um, Nord Nirvana is a fun one. Uh, the oh. nameless Nord. I kind of like that one. That one to me is a little. Uh, I was thinking of renaming my arcanist Telvani Steve. Telvani Steve. <laughs> I like that yeah. quite a bit. I actually. Speaking of names, I think that I'm actually going to uh, rename one of my necromancers. Uh, his name is currently the Chief of Grief. And I uh-huh. think his new name, when I buy the token, is going to be Nord of Nightmare. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Gotta get, gotta get more Nord into the name, you know? Like, yeah, the word get it Nord needs to be used more. It's gotta be in there. We gotta get it. We gotta get it more. We haven't really emphasized more. Nord... We haven't yeah. emphasized the Nord angle quite enough. I don't, I don't know think. if people realize what race I like in the game, so we've got to bring yeah. more attention to well, it. We don't. Well, yeah, we need to make sure they know. Yeah. <laughs> Draugr maker. Draugr maker. That is a pretty good one. That is yeah. pretty good. All right. Well, let's move on to some emails. Scrollingpodcast at gmail dot com is our email address. If you'd like to email us any suggestions for the show or questions or just say hello, shout out to a friend, favorite recipes, uh, Nord character name ideas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Scrollingpodcast at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, first email comes from you guessed it, our good friend Chumpy. <laughs> he says this is a fun one. He says, hey, bros, thought I'd get in there uh, early with the queue, but also right now I ain't got much to do. Unfortunately, I done woke up with the flu, which has inspired my question for you. That was a poem. I I just realized as I was reading it. that was Oh, (laughs) that is a poem. I didn't realize that either. Nice. Good rhyming. Okay, so here's the question. When one's illeth, depending on which ills he suffereth, he doth require attending. (laughs) Medicine, healing, actions of the like... But a nice boiling broth to drive the devil inside away might do the trick for me. What, pray tell, is your food and or drink of replenishment when incapacitated by the lack of bodily immunity? And no, you can't choose lava foot soup. Cough, chum, cough, pee. <laughs> Hope you feel <laughs> better, you chumpy. chumpy. Hope you're yeah. already better. Uh, never, never, the flu, no, that just sucks. That's just, a, that's just never fun. It's not good. But it uh, seems to, you know have a positive effect on your writing skills. So. Yeah, he's, I mean, very poetic on this email. The word Cough pee. Yeah, messy. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you like to eat or drink when you're sick? Davius, what do you think? You know, I'm just going to just really stick to the basics here. If I'm sick, I am drinking NyQuil straight from the bottle. That's, I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm grabbing a bottle of NyQuil, and I'm just chugging it and then i'm trying to go to bed and hopefully when i wake up i am feeling better that is my if, if not more nyquil <laughs> or if i wake up still feeling bad take a couple more swigs of nyquil <laughs> uncle yes uncle said that he thought you were going to say chicken noodle soups you know stick to the basics <laughs> <laughs> nope my basics is the nope. bottle of nyquil on the nightstand Hard drugs are the basics, yeah, Sam. That's the way to do it. I want it. To, it puts you to sleep. It, you know, cleans you up. That's what I'm looking for. All right, mine. I'll go in a similar vein, but uh, a little bit more boutique, I guess. <laughs> uh, I like a hot toddy. You know what a hot toddy is? Oh, I I do know, and I've learned what they. I've learned this medicine, if you will, from you. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a really old remedy that like people used to give like their children and stuff when they had have colds and stuff. But it's basically just uh, you make a cup of tea, you put like a spoonful of honey in there and a shot of liquor, usually bourbon. And you can look up on lines you know, online. There's like a, you know, a bunch of fancy ways you can make it and, and stuff like that. But that's essentially what it is. It's a cup of tea with liquor and honey in there and maybe, a, you know, a lemon or, or whatever, however, however else you want to fancy it up. But uh, a nice hot alcoholic beverage with some caffeine, uh, or you could do like a non-caffeinated version. You know, if you just want to go to sleep or whatever. The the honey kind of soothes your throat, and the the heat kind of makes the alcohol almost like I don't know, like soak into your body somehow. It just feels really good, very relaxing. 
Uh, very soothing. So I like a hot toddy. Honestly, even when I'm not sick, just like on a cold there, day yeah. or something like that. Works out well. I'm just laughing because just thinking of Sam was like, oh, I thought you were going to say, you know, chicken noodle soup. I'm over here like, just drink the drugs. And you're over here like, just get yeah. the liquor. Yeah. We don't like to be sick on the, uh, the Scrolling Podcast. We're not a fan of the feeling, if you can't tell. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to eat something, like a nice hot yeah, bowl of soup, you know, some kind of stew or something. I mean, the classic is chicken noodle soup, of course, but uh, I'm really, chicken noodle soup is a very mid soup, honestly. I'd rather have like a, something beefy, something stewy with some potatoes yeah. or something in there. I'm with you. Give me a stew. Give me something with a little protein yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah, a little something, a little something, something, know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, there you go, Chumpy. Thanks for writing. Next email comes from Demon of Saints. He says, hi there. Recently, I decided after many years to get back into ESO. Couldn't play because of the kids, but they were and are worth the break in a game. But I missed ESO too much. Now they are older. It seems Paw Patrol is much more fun than playing with dad. So I thought about jumping back in. And luckily, I ran across your podcast, which is great, by the way. That same day, I jumped into into ESO on Xbox, then went straight to PvP, uh, where someone put in the zone chat that their group were gooners. If I remember correctly, that's the name of your guild. But if it isn't, this email is very embarrassing. Regardless, <laughs> I would like to join your Discord because it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> that is us. Dark I'm going to say that's most likely, that was for sure us, right? Surely. Who else Surely. is going around calling themselves gooners? Yeah. Who would do such a thing? Uh, so, yeah, thanks for writing Demon of Saints. Yeah, thank you. That's an awesome email. Awesome that you're back into the game. I'm assuming he's found. The Xbox goons, they've taken care of him? Brought him into the fire? Uh, yes, he's in the okay. Discord, so I assume that probably has happened. Yes, surely. Very good. Right? Very good. <laughs> those, those Xbox goons, they know what they're doing. They've, they've got him taken care of. Yeah, they, uh, they took care of him. That's, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't guess he really had a question. He was just saying hi and asking for a, a Just a nice email. Yeah. Just Happy just that he's back in ESO. Uh, he's hanging out with those Xbox goons. They're a great crowd. He's going to, it's a great way to come back into the game right there. Care for over on those guys. All right. They're, they're a little <laughs> different over there. <laughs> Thanks for writing demon of saints. Good to hear from you, man. And yeah, good to have you in the discord now as well. Uh, scroll podcast at gmail.com. That's our email address. Please write us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we have a guild. The guild's name is Stoons Goons. It is literally the best PvP guild in the game. Also just so happens to be the best named guild on the PCNA, Xbox NA, and PlayStation NA servers. We're on all three. Very it's also nice. the official guild of the Scrollin' Podcast. If you'd like to join, please write us at scrollinpodcast at gmail.com. I'll send you an invite. If your guild list is full or if you're on a, dif- <laughs> or if you're on a different platform... Uh, that's okay. The Discord is the true home of the guild. Everyone who's on the Discord is a fully fledged goon. Scroll and podcast at gmail.com to get an invite to the Discord or the guild or both. If you'd like to support the show, uh, the main way you can do that is by going to patreon.com slash scroll and podcast. Sign up to receive Stoon's Boon for $3 a month. That gets you access to the Boon cast uh, and as well as some other things such as like build spotlight videos and stuff like that. Uh, you can also make a one-time donation if you like. Uh, it's a non-recurring payment. You can go to paypal.me slash podcast. There's also a link in the description. Uh, that link is also on our website, our official website, scrollinpodcast.com. It's another really great way you can help us if you just want to spread the word, uh, tell other people about the podcast. That's the very best way to do it. Just send them to scrollinpodcast.com. It has links to all the different platforms where they can listen has our email address. It has the different ways they can support us. It's all right there. Scrollingpodcast.com. You can also give us a star rating and a written review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us out quite a bit. And the very best thing that anybody can do is just join our community. Come hang out with us. Play the Elder Scrolls online with us. Talk about build ideas and stuff like that. That all is stuff that ends up here on the show. Everyone who joins our community is directly contributing to the podcast. Uh, so again, scrollingpodcast at gmail.com to get that invite. Davis, you want to give me a little bit of a break and help me out with these shout outs? Yes. I like being the shout out guy. I, I'm all yeah, I about like a shout out guy, you know, mainly just because I'm just shouting most of the time. So you, you yeah, you're shout kind of out. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, shout out to the chat. We've had a great group here. 
um, you know, Grizzly Khan, yeah. Maddie Quinn, Ricky Bass, Uncle Sam. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. You guys make it so yeah, much more fun uh, to do a podcast. Uh, thank you all. And then just shout out to to players that we've been playing a lot with here lately. Uncle Sam, Maddie Quinn, Pack of Ferrets, Ireworks, Ricky Bass, Kawhi Cats, Kafa Kende, Slavka, uh, probably some others in there that, that, that we're just not thinking of at the moment. But it's always fun when the goons get together and play. Uh, and I would just say, even in the solo queues right now, you just hop in a solo queue, odds are you're going to run into a couple of goons here lately, which is a lot of fun, a whole lot of fun. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been getting a lot of new people into the into the guild here lately, and it really is like every game, pretty much every team has one or two goons on there. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to the elder goons, the OG, you know, the been with us this whole time. Thank you all so so much for sticking with us. Uh, you guys have been a lot of fun uh, as we've episode 131 uh thank you yeah. all uh and then shout outs to stoon's boon uh, and this is the order of join date correct this is the that's right okay so shout out to stoon's boon uh thomas grizzly con gummy bear toadster pork body taggard mother of dragons jim sudica maxwell derpin stuff brewerman dedagon redhead monster Chumpy, John E. Danger, Joe, and FK. I threw you off a little nice. bit there. There was a very, very slight pause on Jim. Yeah, I don't know if you gave Jim his due there, honestly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a reread. Bring the cards back out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, yes, thank you all so much uh, for the students. Bit. Thank you all very, very much. It helps us out a lot. You have no idea. Okay, I think that is the end of a podcast. You did it. You I made managed it. managed to make it through it. Man, I'm sorry. I've been so sleepy. There's been a lot going on lately. My head's just not quite in it. I promise it'll be better next time, guys. I promise. Uh, we're going to call it right there. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time. said he's not able to listen to the podcast. Oh, he's not allowed. Really quick. Not allowed in here? Keeping out Ricky? Ricky, you're out. <laughs> nope, he's in Chad. here. He's in oh, here now. yeah. Ricky, you're in here. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to open the category. That's fooled people a few times. It's like you have to like open the little folder and then you can click into it. Yeah. It's tricky. Computers, you know. It's tricky Ricky, right? That's, that's tricky all. Ricky. It's tricky Old Ricky. Tricky Ricky. Well, I mean, we're <laughs> may as well write it down as a title possibility. <laughs> Old tricky Ricky. Old tricky Ricky. Uh, <laughs> not bad. <laughs>